Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis and looks like the dip buyers are still alive. You guys see that yellow line right there? That's the 20 daily moving average. It's hard for me to be bearish when that 20 daily moving average continue to showcase buying pressure many times, many times since recapturing, well a few times since recapturing the 20 daily moving average back in the end of September, we bounced off it multiple times, guys, and we recently did it yes did it yesterday. Again, dip buyers are still alive. Um, but before we get into the price action charts, I'm gonna start off get straight to the dark pool levels for a spy. A lot of people have been asking for it. So here it is, guys. Here it is. 581.45. This is for yesterday, okay. 2.3 billion in premium came in. 580.5 1.7 billion in premium came in you can add these to your charts and label them dark pool level these are what the institution this is where the institutions are the big money players this is where they're buying and selling we don't know if they are buying or selling but we do know that they're doing one of those things and for somebody to buy there has to be a seller anyways we look at these and use them as pivot levels okay the same way we use the other pivot levels because we know according to cheddar flow that this is these are the levels where they're getting busy so it's important for us to pay attention to it and watch the price axis behavior around them okay so 581.45 580.5 that's for spy um yeah they didn't get much trading intraday you know we had a, a false breakdown setup off the 20 daily moving average Right, that purple line is my 5 DMA from the daily chart. We broke it down, recaptured it, and from there we popped up all the way to uh, my 583.2-ish level. But other than that, it didn't get much of a move. I mean, it's a good move if you caught the false breakdown. But other than that, it was just crept up all day. Um, but as far as the charts go, like I said, it bounced off the 20 daily moving average again. This is the price action telling us that... The dip buyers are still alive and they seem pretty well all right question now is will they be followed through 583.2 is my next resistance level with 584.5 and 586 now you guys can see yesterday that 583.2 level held as resistant and 584.5 held as resistant from last friday we need to see these sell zones clear to let us know that the sell orders that are at these levels are gone and if they are gone, there is nothing stopping um, SPY from heading up to 586 or higher. Maybe we'll get a new all-time high. Maybe we'll continue to melt up until election day, until FOMC. I don't know. We will see. But my plan is just to react to the price action. Okay? Because right now, I have a 582 level. It's trying to hold that support in the pre-market, as you guys can see. If it breaks down, and if it breaks down the 5 daily moving average, which is right around my 579.5-ish FIB level. Yesterday, I was referencing the 580 level. Worked pretty well. But today, it looks like I'll just be looking at the 5 DMA as support, which is around 579.7 right now. So, we break down 582. We break down 579.7-ish. We, we definitely could drop back down. Back to the 20 daily moving average and you guys see where all the tough buying pressure where all the dip buyers are stepping up they are stepping up at the 20 daily moving average so that right there tells us if we lose the 20 daily moving average we're going to get bearish that's the safest time to get bearish because everyone who bought the dip off the 20 will likely cut loss and it could push us down a lot lower we'll see but now but remember my my principles of training you know the levels, which I gave you. You know the setups, which I gave you. And then you trade it unbiasedly in real time. Let's move on to Triple Q now, okay? Triple Q, we had a beautiful, beautiful uh, move to the upside. We actually had a good good trade with Triple Q yesterday. I wrote here in my Discord, Triple Q needs to break down 495 to put 493.5 and 492 or lower in play. And I wrote, if 495 defends as support and 497 recaptures, we are heading up higher. This was a good one, okay? If you caught the false breakdown setup with SPY, cool. But with Triple Q, it was a little bit easier. A lot easier, actually, because we just cleared 497. 
and it never looked back. It wasn't much trap like it was with SPY yesterday. We cleared 497, we cleared 498.5, we cleared 500, and it just kept taking the stairways up. So very uh, grateful for Triple Q coming through for us because SPY was all right, but Triple Q was a lot better. Now we go uh, to the daily chart, all right? What's the next plan? Looks like Triple Q may want to head up higher, okay? But is that the case today? We will see. You guys can see with this big body green candle. Hopefully, we don't get a doji today. Hopefully, we don't get a doji. But I did have this downtrend line. This is official breakout time, okay? Official breakout. Um, yeah, so it's above 500. 500 is first support. Next resistance at 502. And the previous all-time high was around 503.5-ish, okay? So 502 and 503.5 are the next resistant levels. If they clear... We could be heading up higher to new all-time highs. I wouldn't short unless we break down 500, 498.5, or 497. Let's take a look at the dark pool levels for Triple Q. 495.23 is where majority of the activity came in. 877 million in premium right there, guys. And then we can see a bunch of activity. 500 mil, 220 mil coming in around the 500 level. All right, so more reasons why that 500 level is one of my pivot levels all right let's go to nvda nvda had a decent little bounce off the 139 level it opened below 141 which is a critical level bounce off 139 and it recaptured 141 okay it's, the stock has you know it gave us beautiful moves to the upside directional move but lately it's been chopping look like it's forming a triangle here not a perfect triangle like they teach us in the books but it's a decent little triangle. It's developing, is it? All right, it's developing, all right. So that tells us that NVDA is in the chop phase. You're gonna get up and down movement, okay? But at least we got a structure here. At least we have a structure. Be getting back above 141 will put us to 142.5, and the structure is around 143.5. But I got the 144 target. You know, we clear 144. I would be very bullish and favor new all-time highs. All right now, this if we break down 139. Break down the structure, break down yesterday's buy zone. We can get uh, bearish 137 in play first, and then 135, 133, 131.5, and 130 below. Okay? Uh, let's see. NVDA. Let's see some dog pool levels for NVDA. 141.25. Five, over 540 million in premium for 141.25. So that's right around one of my levels, okay? Now, Tesla gave us a couple of days of pullback after the island reversal. Um, good pullbacks that you could definitely was tradable. I do have resistant. I know it was a lot of lines, guys. So sorry, but I do have resistant at uh, 260 and 262. Well, it was around 260 now. So 262. 262 was a previous sell zone. We cleared it. Gave us a beautiful move to the outside. $11 move to the outside. However, we lost that level. So 262 is resistant that needs to recapture if we ought to put in a bottom, try to put in a bottom, put 264, 266, 268, 269.5-ish back in play. Got to clear that 262 level. But if we stay below it, bears have a shot at more downside. Break it down 260 and 258.5. We'll put 257, 255, 253, and all the way down to 250 all back in play, guys. Let's see the dog pool levels for Tesla. 259.5 okay so 259.5 i have a 260 level but hey 259.5 definitely can reference that if you want and if we break it down we can head down lower i can't get bullish unless we get above 262 apple looks like it's, it's it's trying to put in a bottom okay this little low we had back in october 23rd they're trying to put in a bottom a uh, little bit of consolidation these last couple of days but we did get the breakout the recapture of this downtrend line, all right? From, from here, staying above 233 is a plus for the bulls, but they got to clear 235 to send us to 237 on new all-time highs, all right? If you're a bear, you need to see 233, 231.5, and 230 fail to put 228.4 in play. And below 228.4, that's a fib level, also a previous buy zone. If that breaks down, it's going to get real nasty for the bulls. IWM. Okay, it's below my 222 level. 
um, that 220 level held as support. So if this follow through, that'll clear 222 today or tomorrow to put 224 or higher in play. Okay. Since we know where the buy zone is around 220, bears need to break that level down to let us know all the buying pressure there, the buying strength gone. And if it's gone, 218, 216.7 or lower in coming, guys. Look to react. Amazon. Amazon got a very nice bounce yesterday. Okay, I had that fib level around 188-ish. Beautiful bounce around that area. Um, yeah, next resistance is at amazing. Next resistance is at 190. What's the pivot high here? 195.5. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go down to 195. All right. My resistance level for Amazon is at 195. And if that clears, guys, I really think we can get to 196.5, 198, 200, and 201.2. Got to clear 195. And we're testing it right now. If we are getting a pullback, all right, we are getting a pullback, 193, 190 must fail. Okay, started with 193. Short below 193. 190, 188, or lower would be in play. Below 180, I'd definitely be bearish. On Amazon okay and AMD this is my last one for the day for the morning AMD for the folks that's been asking uh, we had a big beautiful bounce to the upside yesterday however I go to the six hour chart for this yeah we had earnings yesterday or something like that earnings you guys do your due diligence on that profit taking time okay looks like the market propped it up Push it up and then boom, profit taking time. So right now it's around 152.9 ish. I have support at 152 and 150. Those are fib levels. If they fail, 148.2 would be in play first, and 147, 145.5, 144, and 142 would all be in play. I cannot trust a bounce off the 152 level unless we can clear some resistant levels. I have a resistance at 154.3. Uh, 156 and 158 trust no bounce unless those levels that I mentioned can clear and recapture to put 160 161.5 all the way back up to 164 and 166 definitely a possibility but it needs to change its behavior right now because right now we're seeing a lot of selling pressure as you guys can see gotta recapture 154.3 156 and 158 let's take a look at the dark pool levels for AMD AMD 166.2 320 million dollars for this stock at 166.2 did I check Amazon Amazon 190.83 that's over almost a billion in premium around that area that's a lot for a stock Apple 233.67 that's over a billion in premium at 233.67 so Add those levels to your charts, guys. All right? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And guys, join the Discord. Join join the Sheep's Den. What are you waiting for? Let's get this money. Let's kick the market maker's ass. Let Uncle Charlie serve you, man. Peace.